Welcome, everybody, and thank you all for, for being here. Uh, it is good to have everybody here. Uh, I want to especially uh, appreciate uh, the, the sufferers as well as the representatives who have been active in supporting this, this bill. And I am proud to sign uh, Bill 239, House Bill 239, which is Act 14 into law. Uh, and I want to thank uh, Garrett Coyne as well as his parents, Joe and Nancy, who could not be with us today, but without whom this legislation would not have been possible. Uh, as you know, Representative Topol heard the story of Garrett's battle with Barron's disease, and that's what started this off. She decided to act. She actually got uh, a bill put together and got it passed unanimous, unanimously uh, in the Senate and the House. That's no mean feat, so congratulations on doing that. But what House Bill uh, 239 does is it establishes a rare disease advisory council consisting of the secretaries of health human services education the insurance commissioner members of the public members from the, across the health care community to advise all of us advise pennsylvania on how we can best serve people with rare diseases in our commonwealth and to give rare disease patients in our state a stronger voice uh, in their government there are 1.2 million pennsylvanians who suffer from rare disease uh, and there are over 7,000 of these rare diseases that affect uh, 200,000 people or fewer across the United States. Uh, a majority of these diseases simply don't have a treatment. This bill helps us tackle this issue uh, head on. It helps us give a voice to those who are fighting rare diseases like Carly and begins to improve care and results for those 1.2 million Pennsylvanians. The Rare Diseases Advisory Council will bring together people from all sectors of the healthcare industry, including state government, doctors, nurses, representatives from hospitals and healthcare providers, to establish a report detailing how we can all work together to improve care for those with rare diseases. Again, one of the most important roles of government is to make sure that organizations, especially those that provide health care and other critical services, are working effectively on behalf of every citizen of Pennsylvania, not just some, but every citizen. And this advisory council will help us reach that goal by shining a light on issues in our health care system that those with rare diseases face, pointing us to solutions to make the difficult road they travel maybe, in hope, we hope, a little easier. Far too often, individuals with rare and unique diseases can feel lost because services are not tailored to their specific needs. We need to make sure that when a person is sick, no matter what their disease or how rare it is, that the patient has the best care available and that they can reach a high quality of life as they battle that disease. This advisory council will help us do that. It will focus directly on those diseases and ailments that are not often seen and will help to make sure that we are doing all that we can to help patients suffering from those rare diseases. This council will provide a report to the House and Senate detailing what changes we need to make, I think within a year is the idea, uh, and what standards we need to introduce to help our constituents who have been diagnosed with these rare diseases. Diseases like Batten's disease, diseases like Caroli disease, FOP, heart nip disease, among others. And so I want to thank Representative Topol for her work in getting this bill to my desk. I applaud her work and echo her cause because we as a government need to do all that we can to give a voice to those who are fighting these rare disorders. It's my hope that the Rare Diseases Advisory Council will point us toward best practices and practical changes that we can make to ensure that health care systems work across the country, across Pennsylvania, no matter what health care problem people in Pennsylvania are facing. So again, thank you, Representative Topol. Uh, thank you to the Coyne family for their strong support, and thank you to all of you for being here. Now, uh, I'll take questions on this topic, then I'm going to sign with, with Representative Topol and Carly. We're going to sit there and sign this bill into law, and then I'll take off-topic questions and a gaggle over on the side. So are there any questions on this topic? Yeah. Is there a list of diseases that this council will look at, or is it just if something comes up down the pike, yeah, Representative, do you want to answer that question? I believe the council is going to be looking at rare diseases broadly, not specifically. So it's the challenge is that most, um, there's so many rare diseases, I think it would be possible to do that. So they're going to be looking at the challenges in general that these patients face. 
Yeah, and if you look at the, the, the nationally, there, as I said, there are 7,000 diseases that affect 200,000 or fewer people. That's considered technically rare diseases. How many of those 7,000 are affecting our 1.2 Pennsylvanians? I don't think any of us knows at this point, but the council will uh, list those diseases and, and try to make sure we're doing everything we can. Yes, Dennis. Can you clarify some of the challenges these people faced that prompted you to want to write this, that needed this bill to be written? Yeah, maybe, do you want to talk about Garrett's particular problems? Because that's, that's what started this. It did. Garrett's father, he's my constituent, came in to talk to me about the challenges that they faced. Um, and government, as, you ta as we talked about in other areas, often operates in silos. So to get you know, a health care provider, get a diagnosis, treatment, educational challenges, sometimes they need special provisions for um, home care, uh, nutrition needs. So to coordinate all that care, and even in, in the interim, trying to find out or even diagnose what the issue is, are extremely challenging. So, so those are some of the things that he talked to me in general. And then finding uh, a pharmaceutical company or, or companies that were doing research in that area, just making those connections as well. Um, these are folks that have very little hope when they finally get the diagnosis. So to connect with other people that are perhaps going through the same thing or people who are working on that disease is, is really important to them. The, the disease that Garrett has is a rare disease that, that uh, uh, the, the cells in his body apparently are unable to, to eliminate waste. And so this builds up in the body and it has all kinds of uh, consequences, like as a visual problems, uh, is in a wheelchair, I think, yes. right, right now. Um, and there, there are just a lot of, of, of issues that Garrett is facing as a result of, of this rare disorder that's affecting, physically affecting his body. Any other questions? Yes. Under current law, if someone is diagnosed with a rare disease, is a hospital required to inform the state of, of that disease? Under this law, you mean? No, or under this, this law or existing law. Is there any I don't know. I'm, I, don't, I don't know of any requirement. Do you know? I, I don't know the answer to that question. There's not? OK. All right, I'm going to sign this. Into, into law, and I'd be happy, proud to have Representative Topol next to me and Carly, my cousin Carly, next to me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much.